Nicole Pemont, and I'm the artistic director of Opera Parallèle. And I'm here to invite you to celebrate La Bastille Day with us. For this occasion, we have decided to share with you our production of Poulain Le Mamel de Teresias, which we did in 2014. We love that project. It has magnificent music. The surreal text by Guillaume Apollinaire inspired the creative juices of our team. The relevant story was also very important to us, since it's considered to be one of the first feminist opera. After the war, France had a need to repopulate and encouraged couple to have children. In the opera, Thérèse, the wife of Le Mari, the husband, who doesn't really have a name, changes her sex to obtain power. She is not interested in having children. What she wants is power. She wants to change customs and establish equality between the sexes. The only problem or challenge we had was that this opera is a little short. It's a little bit under an hour. And we were not interested in doing a double bill. We were, however, investigating this idea for a long time of a collage opera. And we thought maybe this was the right opportunity. We thought a great deal about what piece would be just right and came up with Kurt Weill's Mahagoni Songspiel on a text by Bertolt Brecht, which speaks of the decline of our existing social classes. Having this second opera also be a commentary on the fabric of society tied both operas together very well. The way that this would work is that we would begin by performing all of the viol as a prelude, then move to the complete Poulenc opera, and then at the end, we would bring back elements of the viol as a postlude. We would, of course, respect the integrity of the stories for each opera, but then create a larger narrative that would bring both operas together. This story would also need to continue Apollinaire and Brecht's tradition of creating art that intersects with social issues and have social relevance. Our creative director, Brian Stauffenbiel, placed this larger story in the future, where overpopulation and global warming have depleted all the natural resources and made water the most scarce and valuable commodity. Our vile protagonists are not searching a whiskey bar, they are searching for water. Nirvana in this opera is water. Both of these composers embraced a wide range of styles, including music that was inspired by popular idioms, folk music, jazz, vaudeville, music hall. They basically wanted these styles to bring in a new audience, a little bit like today in some ways. Mahagori begins with a short prelude where you think you're hearing actually a little wind ensemble street band, a little German street band, a little umpapa style kind of sound that brings us into the sound world of Kurt Weill. <laughs> great sense of melody, and in Mahagoni's Zonspiel, you will hear beautiful melodies, a lot of them inspired by cabaret song. You'll actually be surprised you probably know Alabama song, which is a very popular song. What's interesting, however, is that beside these great melodies, we also have in Mahagoni's Zonspiel a technique called Sprechstimme, which was very much used with expressionist composers of that time. This technique, this is a vocal technique actually, which is a cross between speaking and singing. The composer suggests a contour of the melody, but places X instead of a note head to indicate the kind of tone quality of speech he wants. I tell you, we must die. I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, we must die. 
Pas prêche tirer un poulain. You will actually all have a little bit of spoken text, which is referring to opéra comique, which we had. But the two operas, the viol and the poulain, have something in common in how they begin. In poulain, you don't have the little German band, but you have kind of the silent film music of that period. We have to remember that poulain knew Charlie Chaplin and appreciated that kind of silent film music. After this short introduction, a narrator comes in and explains to us what we are going to experience. A lot of French composers in that period did that, a little bit an homage to the Greek tragedies, perhaps. And all of a sudden, we realize that though we are going to laugh about this surreal story, there's depth to the message. He wrote so many beautiful songs. His partner actually was a baritone, and his text underlay was magnificent. What he does in this opera a lot is it actually uses rhythms of dances and creates these beautiful melodies above it. Here is a waltz when Therese is getting rid of her breasts. community, he had many friends, artists, and he loved cubism like many of them at the time. And he integrated a lot of this technique into his musical writing. Basically, that helps him follow the text greatly since you can paint each phrase and each emotion by after the end of one sentence or one phrase, go on to a different style, a different meter, a different color. So you're always surprised when you're listening to this music. You never know where the next phrase will go. basically the people that live at the Zanzibar. At the end, however, when we come to a close of this whole surreal story, they become the human beings, they become us, and they start to sing of something that is very 
primal, that is very profound, and that is not surreal, which is that we need to love each other. We start streaming on the 14th of July for Bastille Day. I really encourage you to go on our website and look at the beautiful program that was created by Cheryl Ruby at the time. It has so much information regarding the composer's bio, the synopsis, our Uber story that I spoke about, the singers, the name of the orchestra. So take the time, I hope, to look at it. It will be very helpful. And until then, I can best